some people were really mad because they thought I wrote it specifically about them. It was all about the sour grapes salesperson. Sour grape sellers are the worst. I'm feeling right from my head down to my purse. I'm thinking that maybe you should be the first. Yeah, the first one in line to get just what I'm giving. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Sellout Show, where we are always sold out. I'm Diana Guerin, the irreverent sales girl, and my mission is to bring a dash of dignity to the art of selling. Hi, Diana. Hi, everyone. I'm Sean Carroll Sandy. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer of the Selling Agency, where we coach humans how to sell to other humans. Because selling like a sour grape just makes bad, bad wine. Bad wine. <laughs> All right. So speaking of sour grapes, what are we going to talk about today, Sean? Well, that's a topic that um, kind of blew up on me in a good way, I think, when I wrote a blog post uh, last week and sent it out in an email. I had tremendous response from, and some heated from people thinking, did you write that about me? I'm, I'm not a sour grape. So I really um, I touched a nerve there. And I want to talk about being a sour grape. What do you do if you're an organization that has sour grapes? Um, what should leadership do? And um, because it's really damaging to have people who are disgruntled and unengaged or you know, cutting corners in your sales organization. I love it. Let's do that one. That could ever do right like Everyone recognized themselves or they recognized someone in the organization that they sell with or they organ recognize the, the le leadership or lack thereof or lack of something in the organization. Have you ever worked anywhere where, you know, either you were a sour grape, so I've turned into a sour grape <sighs> or where you, um, you know, you, th these people run amok. Well, I am so embarrassed to say that there was a period of time where I was extremely frustrated with, frankly, it was my results. And, and our first response that we want to do is go blame something else, like blame the company or blame the, ha, ha, ha. oh my God, I was, I was, a mess. so that was not good. Um, and the point that you made that I think is so important and actually would have handled the problem with me was leadership. Do you know, like, look, you're not doing your sellers any favors right. by not holding themselves to account because otherwise they live in their own head and you're just counting on way too much self-discipline, frankly. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's what I see a lot of times when people say, well, psh, I didn't make quota. Well, I, I don't have any you know, feeder accounts or I don't have any, you know, I don't have a, that big account. Sure. She can make quotas. So they start talking about other people and almost disparaging them in their efforts and undermining their success in a reflection of their own, you know, non plus results or whatever. I've turned sour grapes before, but I never said, oh, that's, you know, oh, well, if I had that count, I'd do well too. I never blamed my lack of performance on anyone else. I've looked around and said, yeah, you guys don't care about the rules. What the hell is going on here? And that's how you lose top performers too. Is, yeah. You know, you, you, you have to, as, as, as business owners or leaders with a sales program, you have to make the terms of engagement clear fair and justifiable for everyone come on baby give it up or my heart's gonna break i bet you if you really thought about it, you, you would all have some great examples i'd love to hear examples from people too um at the tv station i worked at we had a sales contest to go on a cruise and i don't know if this is the first year we did it i won the cruise yeah. and one of the things you got points for is if you sold a monday night football package Ooh. which was really expensive right so some of my counterparts would go, okay, here's your standard, you know, primetime news and all that kind of stuff package. And we're going to put, we're going to sneak in one Monday night football spot and we're calling it Monday night football package. And they got all the points. Oh, not good. That's, you know, that's, that's sneaking underhanded. And they did it over and over again. And, and it was a team of two and they both went on the cruise. So, <laughs> you know, I don't care how hard the rules are. I'll play by them. Right. As long as everyone has to play by those rules and everyone is judged, measured, and held to those standards. And when yeah. you don't, man, people get so pissed. Um, I know. I was in first grade and we had a challenge of who could read the most books in a year. And I was like, I was like way ahead. And then this other, this kid, Tim Hannig, if you're watching, he came in like mid year and ended up winning the contest with not as many books read because of, you know, he came late to the game. Well, 
So it even yeah. makes first graders pissed off. And then, it, but it is so discouraging. It's so discouraging for your top sellers and it will absolutely kill their motivation. And I didn't well, read another book until last year. It's really bad. <laughs> you didn't read another book until last year. <laughs> it has damaging effects. <laughs> And salespeople are very competitive, um, which is great, but you can't let people who are um, conniving and you know, overly aggressive cut those corners and undermine those social constructs or you lose faith and you lose the trust of people who do abide by social constructs. And if you're doing it, knock it off. Knock it off. It does not make you look good. Does that no, but I'll tell you, we have hope coming your way because in a couple weeks, this really great guy named Matt McDarby is going to be joining us and he, he's going to come on and share with salespeople how to manage up to yeah. get the things that you need, to get the accountability that you need, to get the environment that keeps you being a top performer. So I'm really excited for him to bring his perspective. Come on, baby, give it up to anyone who's willing. It's very sexy, the things that we do here. Um, <laughs> so if, if you have a story, our listeners out there, audience, if you have a story about, um, you know, something that was went horribly wrong as a salesperson in your organization that left you just being absolutely mad, but we want to know these things. We want to hear your stories. If you drop us a note below or whatever, just let us know. Sure. Or, you know, find us, tweet us, love, love us. us. I'm done with that. I've been waiting to talk about that because it's been kind of unraveling all week. <laughs> all right. And I will take us out by saying, stop hoping and start selling. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Nobody that could ever do right like me. Oh, yeah.